Domet Hoskins is our instructor from uh, investments class and we all really enjoy his classes because he's so passionate about his course and even the students who don't enjoy mathematics and all these numbers, even they enjoy going to his classes because he has this great humor and uh, passion and all these interesting stories about investments and finance. So we really all enjoy his classes. Mini lecture is a brief introduction to behavioral finance on framing as a source of cognitive bias leading to suboptimal sub investor performance. How about that? And we're gonna do that in 10 minutes. All right, great. So first things first, we're gonna go back 10 years. It is now 2002 and they're about to announce the winner of the Nobel Prize in Economics. Winner is Daniel Kahneman. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. People couldn't believe it. Now, Daniel Kahneman's a professor, renowned professor at the University of Princeton. So that makes sense. The only problem is Daniel Kahneman has never taken a course in economics <laughs> in his entire life. He doesn't teach economics. He teaches psychology. So how did he get the Nobel Prize in economics? Well, he got it by asking his students two questions. And I'm going to ask you the same questions, modify a little bit for Kazakhstan, um, and we'll see if we get the same results. All right? OK. Question number one. You finally decided you're getting a financial calculator, right? And so you decide that Casio is good enough and you're going to go to Zoom to buy a Casio calculator, right? And you figured out a really good place to buy it. It's 8,000 tenge, all right? So you go to Zoom, you got the money, you're ready to buy the calculator, and the person looks at you and says, you know what, don't you go to Kima? You say, yeah, I do. My sister goes to Kima. Listen, since you're a, you're a KeyMap student. I'm going to let you in on something. I know where this is on sale. This calculator, the same calculator, same Casio, is on sale for only 7,000 tenge. Now, to get to the store, you have to go down the mall, cross the street, and go over to the corner. And the big computer store right on the corner is selling it for 7,000 tenge. Now, the question is, how many of you will take advantage of that, save some money, and buy for 7,000 instead of 8,000. Raise your hand. All right, now look around the room. Virtually everybody, just about everybody, has their hand up, okay? Now, that's not enough for a Nobel Prize, <laughs> right? You gotta ask a second question. Here's the second question. All right, now you want to buy an iPad, right? You wanna buy an Apple iPad. So you check it out, and you find a good place that's selling it, for 90,000 dollars, uh, 90,000 tenge, excuse me. 90,000 tenge, right? So you go to it and guess what, it's in Zoom. You go to Zoom, you find the place, you've got your 90,000 tenge in cash, you're ready to buy it, and the guy says, wait a second, do you go to Kima? My sister goes to Kima. <laughs> Listen, I will let you in on a secret. I know where this iPad is being sold at a discount. So you go over to the corner, it's a big computer store on the corner, right? Where you can buy this iPad for 89,000 tenge instead of 90,000 tenge. Okay? How many of you are going to take advantage of that and buy it at 89 instead of 90? Raise your hand. Now look around the room. Now the few people that have their hands up have it up kind of <laughs> like they're really not sure what the right answer is. <laughs> maybe it's up, maybe it's not. But most of you don't, okay? So let's think about that for a second. What have I demonstrated? Was demonstrated at Princeton, and I demonstrated here at KeyMap. How about people are crazy? <laughs> people are crazy. You all are crazy. You are going to save 1,000 tenge, you're going to buy the calculator by walking a little bit. 
right? But when you're buying the iPad, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. 1,010 gig, <laughs> I don't care about that, right? Why can't you care? 1,000 tenge, sure. I want to save 1,000 tenge. It'd be crazy not to save 1,000 tenge. And they'll get, no, no, no. 1,000 tenge seems so little now. Right? Interesting, right? Same amount of work, same amount of money. In one case we do it, the other case we don't. That is what psychologists call irrational. Right? Not just psychology, but everybody calls it irrational, right? Now here's the problem. Economists base their entire, the foundation of their work on, the, on their premise that human beings are rational, right? We will all seek to optimize our utility, to maximize our utility, our happiness, our wealth. But yet people, as human beings, do things that don't make any sense. Right? Now, you might be thinking, well, why is it? Why is it that I care about a thousand tenge in one case and I don't care about a thousand tenge in the other case? And you might think, hmm, it has something to do with what it is I'm buying, right? In the case of the iPad, it's a lot more expensive. So that's what we call framing. Framing, um, also referred to as uh, reference point dependence, says that the context makes a difference, right? So, do you know who takes advantage of this every day? The fact that we frame our purchases and, and uh, value money relative to, to what it is that we're buying are car dealers. Car dealers. What's the most profitable thing that a car dealer sells besides the servicing? Servicing is also pretty profitable. But when you buy a car, what's the opportunity for the car dealer? Accessories, right? The better wheels, the, uh, how about the stereo, right? So you're gonna spend $30,000 on a car, what the heck, let's throw in $2,000 for a better stereo, right? $2,000 for a stereo, the profit margin on that is over 50% extremely profitable for the car dealer. And people are willing to do it because they don't seem to think that that's a lot of money compared to a $30,000 car. So we get, I, I love this, we get rugs to protect our carpeting, right? And then we get plastic covers that protect the rugs that are protecting our, plastic, our, our carpeting, right? We buy all these things because, heck, what's another couple thousand dollars if you're already spending $30,000? So understanding how human beings work can be very profitable. Now in investments, not understanding how people work and how you, you yourself work can lead to losses, right? So let's look at an easy concept of, of framing with a stock price, okay? You buy a stock for $24, okay? Right? Now what happens to the stock? It goes down to $20. Now, do you like the stock? No, it's a terrible stock. You wish you had never bought the stock, right? You know, Will Rogers, a social uh, commentator in, in the past years, 100 years ago in, in the United States, used to talk about buying stock. And he said, stock is great. Buy stocks that go up. And if they don't go up, don't buy them. <laughs> right? Good advice, right? But we don't know in advance if it's going to go up or down. If it goes down, we don't like it. We wish we hadn't bought it, but we have it. Now, let's imagine your friend who thinks you're a terrible investor, so he's going to do everything the opposite. You hate this stock, so he's going to buy it, right? So he buys this stock at 20. Now, let's say it goes up to 22. Do you like the stock? You bought it at 24. No. It's still a lousy stock. Now, how about your friend? Like. He loves it. He says, what's wrong with this stock? <laughs> it's great. Right? So let's say it goes back up to 24. What are you likely to do? Sell it. You might sell it because it was a lousy stock, and now you can get out of it without any loss. Right? What is your friend doing? Keeping or buying more. Right? 
So how we look at this stock has to do with how we frame it. For you, it's a $24 stock, and that causes you to make certain decisions. For him, it's a $20 stock. He makes different decisions. The fact of the matter is, say this stock is IBM. IBM doesn't care, right, for what price you bought the stock. You know, IBM will either make money going forward or not, be profitable, um, you know, have, have surprise on the upside in terms of earnings growth, etc., or it won't. But it has nothing to do with when you bought it. The stock represents a company. The company's not a good company or a bad company based on the reference point or the frame in which you invested. All right. So framing is just one aspect of, of behavioral finance. And we'll talk later about um, other, other things that psychologists have uncovered about our psyches that may cause us not to be the best investors. Right? Um, the problem with investors is that they often buy things that go up, right? Oh, it's gone up a lot? Oh, it must be really good, I'm gonna buy it, right? And then they don't like things that go down. Oh, it went down a lot, I wanna get out of here, All right? And so what does that mean? It's a brilliant strategy of buy high and sell low, All right? Not a very good business, right? Not very profitable. But emotionally, that's what we tend to do, right? What we need is a discipline. What we need is a discipline. Take, take the, the, the gambler, okay? Let's say someone who's a, a gambling addict, just loves to play poker, right? And you can sit down with them. You can say, listen, the expected returns on gambling are negative. Right? The house is always going to win in the long run, which means the more you play, the more certain it is you're going to lose money. Now, logically, if you're rational, that might be enough. But in reality, he better move out of Las Vegas, right? Or capture guy. It's just not a good place for someone like that to be living. He should move to a place where gambling is illegal and have his friends support him in, in avoiding temptations. So we need a structure. We can't rely on our emotions. So one of, the, one of the simple disciplines that are very effective in investing is called rebalancing. Rebalancing is something anyone can do and can lead to much more positive results. When a professional institutional investor busted in that stock, right? And then he'll have upper and lower limits so let's say it's a $100 million portfolio, 2% is $2 million, he'll buy stock for $2 million on the first day. Now, if the stock price goes up, and let's say it be held to bring it back down to 2%, if it underperforms and goes down relative to the rest of his portfolio and becomes only 1% of his portfolio, it triggers a buy to bring it back up to 2%, because 2% is the weight that he wants in this stock for the long run, right? So what does that mean, right? And so, let's say it's half and half stocks and bonds. If the stock market crashes, as it did a few years back, then suddenly the percentage of stocks in your portfolio is now smaller, and you need to start buying. My own portfolio is rebalanced twice a year, in January and July. So regardless of what I'm doing, I'm teaching class, if the stock market goes down a lot relative to bonds, this program will automatically buy stocks and bring it back up to half, right? And vice versa, if the stock market then recovers, which it did, right, to a large extent, um, it's been recovering, and so stocks have been doing better than bonds, we, we see the world. The only way that we can win as investors is that we control our emotions and stick to a plan. Because even though we may not be rational, we can create a plan that is. Thank you very much.
She is one of the professors who inspired me to, to, to take the finance major and I think she has this uh, in innate ability to motivate students and make them inspired with all this finance and stuff and I think he is the one who is the best candidate for this award and I'm voting for Professor Donald Hoskins and let's vote all of us together.